Welcome to Dark Side Adventures, an 18 and older, not safe for work podcast where we explore the dark side of sex, the world of kink, fetish, and BDSM lifestyle. You're like, no to me getting drunk while recording this. No, I was, oh my god, I was sound so sloshed, like, wow. Uh, so, uh, what's been going on with you? Um, not much. Doing some editing, so we can all listen to the podcast. <laughs> Turn, so. Turning pro, podcast turning editing pro down. Yes, yes, we are real podcasters now. Because I told my sister about the podcast, and she says she wants to listen as long as she's not listening to something that She's like, I don't want to listen to you basically being involved in a porno. And I was like, <laughs> fair. I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> so, I mean, if that means she can't listen to the second episode of the week at points, that's fine. But, I don't know. How about you? What's been going on in your life since uh, Sunday? Uh, so, since Sunday, obviously, like, freaking out. Uh, yeah, well, we me finally, too. I finally was able to listen to the podcast, and that was kind of eye-opening. I mean, obviously, like, it's the first episode, but it, it was still one of those, like, oh, my God, like, this is a Realistically, work's been wonderful. Today has been, like, kind of wild. So, obviously, like, y'all know, like, I do, or I'm an exterminator. So, like, I had to go back to, like, this person's house. And, like, Jeez. already in the morning. I knew what kind of day it was already set, like, from the morning. I walked outside this morning and already had a flat tire. So, oh. that already, like, Yeah. And so, okay, I get back to the, so I'm at the house, and I go, like, up to the attic, I look through it, and, you know, like, I'm, like, peeking out, like, you know, looking like a little dog, like, <laughs> and so I finally look up, and, like, one of the snap traps, I was like, alright, there's nothing there, and I look over, and, like, this little thing is just, like, it's laid out, like, arms, arms to the side, and, like, I was like, well, it's good to know that, uh, as simple as pest control is, it's funny how it works so well, but. Yeah, I kind of felt bad for the little thing. But you know what? Uh, every time I'm up there and I have to, like, pick the little thing up, I just have to, like, mentally picture it as a stuffed animal. <laughs> I can't even use, like, snap traps in my house. I, I like, have to take the weenie way out and get the poison and just have them, like, eat it and go die on a wall. <laughs> you got some, got some fucking fine smells up in there, huh? I have never smelled them, so they either die outside or I haven't lived long enough in a place for it to smell too bad. <laughs> at the restaurant I used to work at, Texas is so humid, there's roaches and water bugs everywhere. I swept up a water bug one time, and it was alive, and I didn't realize it. So once I picked up the dustpan, it flew at me, and I screamed. <laughs> yeah, they, they do that. <laughs> they, they sure do. Uh, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's just been kind of, you know, uh, just slowly build on this podcast, make things better, make things uh, move as they say so um, obviously like if you guys are listening y'all have some ideas welcome back to Dark Side Adventures this is episode 2 this is Edwin and Coco we are back again and happy squirrel appreciation day get I your squirrels some peanuts squirrels. are they elephants I, now I, I mean squirrels eat all types of nuts so I mean peanuts work uh, yeah. acorns I don't know what other nuts they eat uh, yeah. maybe do they Chestnuts. eat things besides nuts? Do they eat fruit? I would assume they ate berries or some type or of uh... right. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I have never appreciated squirrels enough to find out. I, I just see them <laughs> across. Well, I wish they were like dogs. You know, where they at least let you like pet them or something. So when I moved out here to Michigan, squirrels are like a very common thing. There's squirrels all over. And I was on the phone with Master talking about an apartment I had just seen. And I was in the middle of a sentence and I went, squirrel! And he was like, what? And I was like, no! No, there's a real squirrel! There's a squirrel! <laughs> and he was like, and? Those are common out here. And I was like, but it's a squirrel! And then I had forgot what I was talking about. Do y'all have the, the fat ones out there? Do y'all have like the like the skinny ones? Like the little... Uh... We've got, so we've got, there's like three kinds. There's like one that's like, it looks like a mini one and I thought it was like a baby, like or like a chipmunk. And he's like, no, that's a such and such squirrel and I don't remember what it was. And then we have like black squirrels and we have red squirrels. What? Yeah, I mean it makes sense. There's more than one species of squirrel, but I didn't realize that there was more than one species of squirrel. 
squirrels. I'm gonna have to do my research on squirrels now. Like I'm gonna have to. Uh, I feel like I'm missing out. You know, I can name like six different types of like. You know, you gotta right. Be, be quote unquote well rounded. So I don't think we explained. We wanted to do like a day show, which was more about like learning the topic of the week, and then we wanted to do a night show, which was a little more risque about the topic of the week and has more of like personal things to us, like what we enjoy about the topic or an experience we've had with the topic or something like that. I agree. Just kind of going off of what you said, yeah, the day show is supposed to kind of be more for like like an awareness type thing where it's yeah. like, hey, you know, people do this, but if you're also like obviously, you know, sexually active, it, it definitely um, adds a, a spice to what you're trying to do. And then the nighttime show, I wanted the whole like premise of the show to be like about like just the listeners. That's why I was so big like when we were setting it up on like, you know, having call-ins and whatnot because yeah. at the end of the day, we can read all we want and we can basically try all we want, but like we're not going to get all experiences. So Exactly. And we're not going to like all of the kinks that we talk about. No, so definitely not. <laughs> I know there's some kinks out there that I don't really want to participate in. I like to watch them or learn about them, but I have no interest in trying them. And that's okay. That's why we'll bring in other people who enjoy those kinks. Mm-hmm. With the day show, there's normally like articles and then we have like a just kind of like a standard topic. Tonight is definitely a little bit different. So tonight what we wanted to do was just kind of uh, talk about our favorite kinks that we have and maybe a favorite scene that uh, we remember that we liked or it could even be a weird scene um, <laughs> but whatever it is. So uh, would, would you like to go first, Coco, or you want me to go first? Sure, I'll go first this time. I let you go first a couple times last time. Okay. Maybe before age, my <laughs> top three kinks and fetishes are submission and power exchange and then I enjoy impact play and I enjoy (laughs) for those listening Edwin and I are video chatting as we record this and he's sitting there like miming what was it a flogger a flogger just like riding like a baseball bat or something (laughs) a baseball bat I mean I guess I can't cringe too much at that I've used three bar before Um, um, so power exchange um, impact and then bondage I enjoy being immobilized in bondage specifically rope but I'm also not too picky on what's used so those are my top three kinks oh no go ahead elaborate um so what I like about power exchange is I definitely enjoy being on the submissive side of it. I enjoy giving up the power and the choice, and I find it very erotic to have my partner um, set the scene and have that dominance and control over what we're doing, whether it be sexual or non-sexual. I really enjoy that. Um, Very erotic, very, very happy. Brings happiness to me. Um, Impact play, I am definitely a masochist. I enjoy the pain. Um, I use the pain. It it makes my thoughts clearer. Um, I prefer study impact play rather than stingy. However, Master definitely loves stingy, and we play with that quite often when we play with impact. So I'm I'm learning to appreciate it more and more. Um, this king canes though, the very good kind of ouch. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like somebody's going uh, golf it. That's really what it sounds like. Oh. Whenever they do it, then you get the whoosh of the of the cane, and the, and then you feel it, and then you have to like stop for a second to try to process it. And it, <sighs> oh, the endorphins and happiness, and especially the bruises afterwards. I love when I get marks afterwards. I find them to be like a sweet, loving caress from my partner and from master. So I really like the aftermarks. Um, or the marks and bruises from afterwards, um, even if it makes sitting down a little bit hard sometimes. And then the third one, bondage and rope. I love, I love like rougher rope. Um, I enjoy like what is it, jute and hemp that are a little bit rougher. I like the feel of them. A- AKA boat rope. <laughs> yes, yes, boat rope. <laughs> They're a little bit more scratchy. I love them. I love the confined feeling, and I feel secure. It's like like a weighted blanket in a kinky way for me I find it very soothing it like centers me and calms me down and just brings all the right feelings and rope can be done in so many ways it can be done incredibly erotically it can be done in a soothing way it can be done like rough it can be done romantic it can be done it can play into my masochistic side if you want to put some um bottle caps under the rope and press so I kind of why I like rope it's very versatile um but you can I mean you can do bondage in other ways too you can do bondage with handcuffs you can do bondage with blankets or a t-shirt even master enjoys very much just telling me to hold still which is 
a struggle. <laughs> yeah, it's a struggle for everyone. Definitely a mental game, which is incredibly fun, but that plays into the power exchange that I enjoy, and that plays into in the bondage and being held still, even if it's like just me holding still because I was told to. So that's why I... I like those things. Oh, wow. I, I have so many questions. <laughs> you can ask. Uh, so you were talking about, like, um, you know, you liking the thuddy versus the stick. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some, obviously, like, a lot of people that have been in the BDSM community know kind of, like, what those two things are. But, like, for some of the newer people or people that kind of, like, join us and don't know about BDSM, do you mind, like, going into a little bit more in-depth on, like, thuddy objects and even, like, stingy objects? Oh, absolutely. So most impact objects, um, impact being like spinking or flogging or whips or anything that impacts the skin in that kind of rougher, not even, it doesn't even have to be rougher, but in, in that kind of way. Think of like a flogging or a spinking or something like that. I prefer impacts to be painful. You can do impacts to be like sensual with like a rabbit fur flogger that's very soft and gentle, but it builds up the erotica and builds up the steam and the excitement for your sex or your scene or whatever you're doing. Or you can do it like I enjoy, which is is more painful. They tend to, they being BDSM and kinksters, tend to class it into two different types of impact um, being stingy and thuddy, which is the typing you get. The best way I've heard it described is um, thuddy kind of like hits and disperses really quick. It's like getting hit with a softball it hits really hard and then it's gone really quick. Whereas stingy hits you and it kind of sits and sits and then it disperses. It's like getting snapped with a rubber band is really stingy whereas <laughs> someone like giving you a turkey on the thigh is more well over pants is more thuddy so some thuddier impact play objects are obviously you can get a flogger that is stingy but typically floggers are more thuddy especially the heavier the falls the softer the leather it's going to be more thuddy um whereas a cane or a whip are going to be a lot more stingy um a hand spanking is typically more thuddy there's ways to make it stingy but most people make it more thuddy I call it a, a beating stick for those of you who do like Ren Fairs or um, LARP it's a bopper it's um... <laughs> why are you laughing are you laughing because I'm being nerdy <laughs> no I'm laughing because you, it's just the, the, the way you said it like it sounded so serious at first and then you go it's like a little bopper and all you can think about is like a little Deadpool like a little Deadpool <laughs> bopper like oh I'm sorry. I'm calling them boppers. They're, it's basically a PVC pipe with foam wrapped around it. A lot of people yeah. use noodles. Um, so that's going to be a lot softer until you break the foam and you just get PVC pipe. PVC. <laughs> <laughs> so that one's more soft. Um, a rabbit tail flogger is considered to be thuddy rather than stingy because it doesn't leave a stingy after hit. What else? Belts. I consider a belt to be more thuddy even there, though there is a sting to it. Let's see. I think those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head that I, I play with more often. Oh, a Taz. It's a T-A-W-S-E, I think. That's kind of like a, a thick belt, but at the end it's split into two pieces. It kind of looks like a forked tongue. That one's definitely stingy to me. So. Good old Taz. I'm going to have to steal that one or at least like make a list of like items that I want, you know. Very fair. fair. Um, the last time Master and I had a scene, we used, um, he's got a, is it a horse whip, I think? But it, basically it's a really long handled thing. Thing, and it's got um, a rope with a knot on the end and they use it like jockeys and like a horse race will use it to make the horse go faster but the whip part itself is probably eight or so inches and it it might be longer but I, I'm gonna go with eight inches and it, it just whew, that stings a lot and it's, it is very it's not meant to feel good <laughs> I know it's not meant to feel good we've he used it this last time and I mean he only used it for a couple hits but it was it was intense it was intense it's something I definitely want to build up in because I enjoyed it but I can only handle it for a little bit at the moment. Okay, that's, that's why it's always like a stepping stone like me. Well, I guess for me uh, top three kinks uh, of course we all know what number one is. <laughs> <laughs> Oreo eating come on. Oh, oh, of course. But we like they, double. Yeah, the double stuff and then you gotta pour hot syrup all across it just to make sure you know, I, got a, I, got that, I got that food fetish. No, I'm just uh, uh, but on a serious note, no, I, I really do enjoy rope. 
it is one of my favorites. Uh, rope can be used, obviously, in, like, many ways, but, like, you know, not just, like, like I was saying in the first episode, like, not just with Shibari, but um, I think rope can be used for healing uh, for anybody that, like, doesn't know what rope feels like. Um, uh, Coco kind of made, like, a good remark on it. She said it's kind of like a, a big hug or, like, a blanket. Um, for me, to get a little bit more specific, it, it almost feels more like spandex, I guess. Um, That's a good one. It, yeah, it constricts you in, in certain places. I mean, you, if you do it across your chest then you definitely like know um, you know what it feels like but uh with that like i think rope can be used for healing as well it's kind of weird that it, it sounds like that but it's kind of true it's kind of like to just kind of give y'all like an idea like you ever seen those old men that like wear tube socks <laughs> yeah. or, or, or like wear those uh compression socks compression obviously socks? for like yeah for for blood flow so kind of like the same premise i, I would say for rope if you do it correctly so uh, kind of something to think about there for all my my, my ropies and uh you know my medical people that Tell me if I'm wrong or not. I could be wrong. But um, uh, my favorite part, honestly, is just, like, the creativity. Uh, moreover, just, like, every... No, there's no such thing as a bad design except for if it doesn't hold. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, that makes a lot uh, of sense. So you can start anywhere on the body, and you can go to just about anywhere else on the body um, as long as you know what you're doing. There's always different types of knots. There's always different techniques. And not even just that. Like, people are always, like... I mean, you can look online, and you'll find hundreds of different types of, you know, uh, rope chest harnesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, hip harnesses, all that, and then none of them be the same. So it's it's kind of cool that you know, with just something as simple as boat rope, <laughs> you can realistically do um, anything with it. So uh, just, just a point there. Just because I like the boat rope and I like the scratchy stuff, does not mean you have to play with that. There is cotton, there is silk, there is bamboo rope, which is nylon. much softer. Yeah, you <laughs> just kind of choose. Some of them obviously look better for whatever occasion it may be, but um, also with rope, you know you can kind of have like the secret kink like you can tie somebody you know with like a chest harness or something or you know their legs and then they can wear it out in the public and like nobody would ever know because obviously the clothes would cover it so it's kind of a <laughs> kind of an out in the open kink you know for all you uh, 24-7 dynamics out there looking for extras <laughs> it's definitely a fun thing that kind of plays into the the power exchange as well and just even just like as foreplay to wear rope out under your clothes where no one can tell but you feel like everybody's staring at you so. mm-hmm. wouldn't even know uh I was going to say that number one is actually pretty big for me. Everything else is just kind of small and, like, minuscule. Uh, the more and more, like, I'll be honest with you, the more and more I do, like, impact play or find ways to do impact play, the more and more it intrigues me. So this is kind of, like, one of those, like, weird personal things. But, like, obviously, me being uh, a, a different color of the ethnicity, like, in our community, we're not used to, like, having to be the ones that dish punishment. You know what I mean? We're kind of u- being, we're kind of used to the ones, like, being punished, but... It's weird, like, whenever I first, like, picked up, like, my first vlogger, so I was at, I guess this kind of uh, goes into story time a little bit. I wish we had, like, a little story time button. Right? <laughs> we, need a, we need a little ding, story time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find us yeah. a little, uh, a little yeah, sound get, button. Yeah, we gotta get a soundboard, or, or a little soundboard or something. Yeah. So, story time, uh, I have this friend, uh, Miss... We'll, we'll call her Miss Sugar Pants, but she had like she had a unicorn flogger, and I, I I looked at it and I was like I was like is this thing really gonna work? Because like obviously like the head was like a or the handle was a unicorn horn and it came down to like the little point, and then the bristles were like uh they were bristles they were they weren't actually flails uh <laughs> they were just little little dangly bristles on the end and like they were pretty long, and I was like are you sure this is actually gonna like work? <laughs> and she was like she was like yeah give it a try. So whatever, like, I initially, like, picked it up, like, I stopped for some reason. Like, I literally, like, mentally, like, stopped. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? I was like, it can't be that bad. So finally, like, I went through and, like, you know, I hit her on the back with it. And she was like, so what do you think? I was like, it doesn't feel like it did any damage. She goes, she goes, well, wait, just look. And then you could just see, like, the red going across. I was like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. I was like, this doesn't even look like it would hurt. So the more and more, like, stuff that I deal with, like, I've done the foam bats. You know, obviously, we've done, you know, the, the whips. I've done canes. Well, I should say practice whips. We don't throw whips yet after after about a year of throwing whips. But um, what else? What are, what are the other things that I've kind of messed with? See, I know you uh, played with floggers yeah. and crops. Yeah. Um. What else have you what else, what else have I done? Uh, 
Um, I haven't done like a, a hanger or anything, nothing wild like that yet. I thought you had done but, a hanger. I thought we had talked uh, about that. <laughs> the hands, hands is like a definite favorite right now. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize that the hands could be so uh, versatile. Definitely versatile <laughs> and very intimate. Oh yeah, you're holding on one side, and then you know you're either hitting their, hitting their back, or you, you're punching their butt cheek. Just, <laughs> yeah. just funny things like that. But um, no, it's it, impact play is definitely like growing on me. Yeah. Uh, and third and final you know what i'm gonna go ahead and say water sports it's been kind of a thing water sports kind of like with other things like mixed in like obviously but like breath play and stuff like that but just something about like either water going everywhere or water coming out of places or going places <laughs> uh is i don't know it's just kind of like a hot thing to me because i mean one of like my minor kinks is like like pussy gruel like just the the, the wetness of a woman obviously mm-hmm. so it, it's it just kind of like explodes on that, but anyway, that's kind of uh, those are my top three currently. I'm not, and I, I love that you say currently because that can change, and it's okay uh, to change. You're not even lying. Like I feel like the board more that we listen to people that like you know get the inspiration to try things. Uh, it could change. I love that. I I find it very I don't know the word to use. It's very sad to me when people aren't willing to grow and learn more and being open to change whether or not you do change is up to you but being open to the option of changing if you find something you like more or less like it's very sad to me when people are against that i think it's it's sad for the world and it's not even not even just in like sex and kink and stuff but like in general if you're not willing to learn something new or change the way you're doing it because something else is better or whatever um it's sad there's the who's it that gave the quote of of the, you're never old until you stop learning. Or it, oh. I think I paraphrased that, but I I love that. Who was it? Whenever you, oh, somebody specific. If you stop learning, you die. If you're not learning, you're dying, or something like that. Basically, yeah. maybe I'll find it and we can put it in our description. Yeah, because that's a good one. I really like shout, that quote. Shout out whoever quoted that. Sorry, I can't quote you obviously correctly. Right. But <laughs> we'll give you credit. All right. Sorry, I'm not crediting you at the moment. Scroll down just a little bit, listener, and you will see the credit. Yeah, those are our top three. Now, now, so. it's, now it's the fun one, huh? Now it's the fun <laughs> one. Our favorite scene or funny scene or something like that. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I'll go first. All right. Favorite scene. Favorite scene. Oh, yeah. So my favorite scene, I, I guess, is technically like a home scene. It was actually me and my ex-girlfriend, and it was kind of one of those things where, like, you know, I, I knew kind of about BDSM, but she was the one that kind of, like, helped, like, pushed a little bit more. And so that was, like, uh, that was also, like, the first time I had read, like, a BDSM book. I, I can't remember what book it is. I'll have to go through it and, I'll, like, obviously try and find it. She, we were having, like, a scene one, one night, and I knew it was going to be, like, impact, but I feel like I, fi- like, surprised myself, you know, like, whenever you're doing, like, something, and then, like, your, your head just kind of, like, goes into the right space, and you're also able to kind of, like, think on the fly. You know, normally I'm used to kind of, like, doing the normal, like, you know, hot spots. So, you know, I'll do, like, you know, her, uh, you know, her back, you know, the, the cheeks, you know, and then, like, I kind of, like, extended, obviously, like, the thigh, you know, the, the frontal thigh, uh, yeah. the chest, the chest was a, a wild one, too. Obviously, like, people, some people do, like, the ham, or not the hamstring, the, um, and, like, a couple other places as well, but I, I don't trust myself enough for that yet. <laughs> it was nice, because, like, I felt like everything that I had learned at that point kind of, like, came into fruition, like, in just that, like, one scene, like... It, it almost looked like it almost felt like a movie and like a lot of people say that about their scenes like sometimes it just kind of felt like so fluid it was almost like a movie and then when you finally like you know finish off and then you know you're done with everything and you just kind of like lay in there I guess beautiful because it was kind of like I'm playing these things like back in my head like I had even dressed up like I had the nice slacks you know the <laughs> nice like buttoned up shirt like, I, was, I was out there look whoosh, I was out there ready <laughs> now well everything you know like I said kind of fit perfect and that was basically like my, my favorite scene to without going like too far in depth because it, it gets a little wild in there so sounds like a good scene it, just, it sounds like it all just kind of like everything that you had learned and everything you had practiced kind of like came to a crescendo and mm-hmm. you hit that peak and you probably hit like a top high like a dom space at that point and it flowed really smoothly and it was, sounds like it was a really good scene that just kind of I've heard from other people like your first air quotes real scene or most intense scene like that first one that goes really well is kind of like a weight off of your chest because then you're like you trust yourself a little bit better you have something to be like yeah i did this this was great this is good and you can build off of it it's, it's your turn it's my <laughs> turn 
yarn. I'm trying to decide. I'm debating between two because I have one. I just, I have, well, I'm going to share two. I'm going to be special. Um, one is my all time favorite just because it was amazing. Um, and it holds a very special place in my heart. Um, but the other one, I just, I really enjoyed because it was, it was just fun and it was, um, non-sexual. Um, a lot of people think that like, if you try to go kinky, it has to include sex, but the scene is non-sexual. Um, and actually I'm going to toot your horn because it was with you when we went to rope night. Um, we went to rope night, you and I, and, um, it was the night you did like the corset on me and we had lots of fun. There was lots of laughs. We, like you did a corset on me and rope and then you showed me how to do a tie on you and then another couple came in and we helped them through a couple ties there and it was just it was so much fun because it was very light very there was a lot of humor in it even though the situation wasn't humorous it was just very fun and it was a happy learning place that didn't turn sexual which is something that I hate when you're trying to have like just like a learning moment and a fun moment and the other person you're with always tries to turn something sexual that was ERD right it was ERD oh that that was the night we went and had burgers. It was the night we went and had burgers. <laughs> and then the power went out at the burger place. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> it was a great night. So Oh yeah, that was fun. Man. Yeah. It was a long time ago, but yeah, that was that was my favorite non sexual scene just because like it was just a good night overall. Uh for those that don't know, ERD is a rope group in Dallas that hold or held I I doubt they still are because of COVID at the moment, but I don't know. But they held a dungeon night just for free role play and they had people who were um well versed in rope that were there to be able to help you and they would do lectures on rope lessons and it was just really fun that's what ERD was and so Edwin and I have been to a couple of them that one just happened to be my favorite yeah we so. you know we we uh I guess we'll have to do a story time one day on like how I guess like we had met each other like that was kind of a, a weird one too that so is true. uh how long have we known each other now it's been like two two three years now it's just been- kidding it's like five <laughs> June, June or July will be four years. God damn. Yeah. I know that because I moved to Texas in 2017, and that's when we met. So oh I don't remember God. if we met in June or if we met in July. Dude, time flies, doesn't it? It does. It does. I know. I was um, I was doing some earlier. I was hanging out at Master's House, and I was going through my computer, and something popped up, and I, I like, stopped for a minute, and I went, has it really been? No. <laughs> and I realized I... It was 2013 that I, like, had my first scene, which means it's oh, been... Your very, very first scene? Uh-huh, my very, what? very first scene. And so I realized, like, that's that's almost nine years. And I was like, holy cow. I, one, I didn't realize it had been that long. <laughs> yeah, nine years. I had to, like, count back. <laughs> so, right? Oh, heavens. Now I'm trying to do math, and I'm, like, triple guessing myself. <laughs> Oh, no. What year did I turn 18? <laughs> help. Somebody help with the math. Somebody help with math because I'm not smart. Okay. It like hit me. I was like, I, it's almost double digit. Now, obviously, I haven't been completely immersed in the BDSM world that long because I kept like jumping out of it. But I have been in the BDSM world for nine years and I have been immersed consistently in the BDSM lifestyle for almost four years. Immersed. Immersed. I, I have actually put effort into staying in the BDSM lifestyle for the past four years and it's made me really happy. I'm really grateful that I gave myself the permission to find the community and stay in the community. I, I can agree. Uh, but go ahead with your second one. Oh, yeah. So I'm, with I'm, your second you know, one. We're off topic. <laughs> Right? So the second one, it, my favorite scene all together, but it also holds a really special place in my heart because it's the very first scene Master and I ever had. And it holds that sweet moment in my heart. So I, like I said in the last episode, Master and I started as long distance. Um, and so it took a long time before I was fly out and meet him. And so I flew out June. So the first time I flew out, I flew out, he bought me the plane ticket and I flew out and met him for the first time and we had dinner 
water and all of that. And then he took me to the store and he bought me bubble bath because I had been <laughs> saying I, I had been saying for a really long time that I wanted a bubble bath and I just never went and bought bubble bath. In fact, I keep saying right now that I want bubble bath and I just haven't bought bubble bath. It's a bad habit of mine. Um, so he bought me bubble bath. Master drew me a bubble bath and he put me in there. And as I was sitting in the bathtub, he was like washing my legs. And then I was just sitting there in the bathtub and we started talking. He asked what I wanted to do for the scene tonight. He asked what I didn't want to do. He asked me for my safe word. And when I said, oh, we'll just use the stoplight system, he then clarified what the stoplight system meant. He said, so red for stop and yellow for slow down. And I said, yes. That way we were both on the same page and we negotiated with their level heads what we wanted to do tonight, where we wanted to see the night to go. So he finished washing me and I got out of the tub and he set up PA's massage therapist. And so he set up his massage bed and he told me to lay down on it and we started an impact scene. And I had told him I wanted to stay, I needed a warm up um, and I wanted to stay on the thuddier ish side, um, but I wanted to experience his canes. And he's got a speed flogger and he has a horse hair flogger, which are both on the stingy side that I also wanted to experience. And so we, he made sure I was comfortable on the bed, especially since because I had like scooted up and I had like popped my arms up and around so they were kind of hanging off the table and he was like, are you comfortable? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. And so he's like, okay. And so then we started and it was um, just a really enjoyable impact scene. It was emotional and it was incredibly connecting and it was, you know, as painful as it is to have impact and canes and floggers, it was very pleasurable and very erotic and comforting. And it was just like all of the feelings came out and I enjoyed it very much. And then afterwards he, he like wrapped me up in a blanket. He had bought me a weighted blanket, so he put the weighted blanket out on me, on me. And he went and his dog had been whining at the door because she had heard me cry. And Aww. for a little while, the door was open, and she like kept coming in and like nudging my arms and like trying to get between me and Master. And he's like, "No, she wants this." <laughs> so he had to lock her out. It's okay, um, it's, it's, okay. it's okay, Char. Um, so he um, had locked her out of the room, and so he like kind of bundled me up on his bed, and then he took her out. So I I enjoy a minute of silence and solitude to myself after a scene especially an intense one and then I want all of the cuddles and I want to be reaffirmed and I want assurance and I want I want to feel like your heat I get very cold after a scene when I start to drop and so he let, he let Charlie out and then he came back and he brought with him water and cherries and dark chocolate almonds and so we sat there cuddled up against him and he made me drink water and he fed me and we kind of talked about the scene and kind of debriefed and then and we cuddled and watched TV and fell asleep. Hey. <laughs> yeah, so that's See. that's my favorite scene because I mean yes it hits that special place in my heart but it also it was one of the best scenes I had because it had that negotiation because in and that negotiation wasn't in the heat of the moment. We didn't negotiate during the scene whether or not I wanted his cane. We negotiated beforehand so we both knew kind of what we were getting into at that moment and what we weren't getting into and we both had the safety net of that safe word. Okay girly I see you. <laughs> oh man, I'm 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 glad you met your master. He's, he he sounds like a uh, he sounds wonderful. Tom, come on, we'll have to have him on the show one day. I tried to convince him to come on the show tonight, and he went and going to bed. I've been up since three a.m. I went. That's fair. That's, That's fair. fair. I will accept that. <laughs> And then he just like, like looked at me and was like, really? And I was like, yeah, I'll accept it. Can I have a kiss now? You go to bed. So it's all it's all good. I'm sure one day he'll he'll hop in there, but he'll he'll hop um, in here. I'm sure we'll get him on. We'll yeah, like him, maybe we'll bring him in for Kings. Those are his favorite. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We we'll bring some other people. I feel I gotta decide. Like I don't know. I feel like we gotta like we would have to bring in like the first guest sort of. So I don't even know who we would like bring as the first person. Um, I mean normally the show like normally it's about like time for call it, but uh. You know, Colin! You're Colin's tonight! <laughs> Woo! Woo yes, uh, Professional editor, uh, Coco, we got right here. Sure trying it. She'll be chopping it up on the hunchback, and I'll be over <laughs> here trying to, trying to work the, the social media. Uh, hopefully next time, 
our next show it'll actually be live so like people might actually like jump in and like hear it yeah so yeah. so that's slightly nerve-wracking a little bit just because like some of my favorite content creators were kind of like talking about it youtube is wonderful because it's a platform to give like everybody a voice that's also the downfall because it gives everybody a voice <laughs> so you know, it was just kind of one of those things where i feel like there's gonna be there's gonna be people that don't like our work well, or obviously. they'll say yeah or they're gonna say oh you guys aren't knowledgeable enough blah blah, blah. well that's the whole reason why we even have this podcast exactly right? we are not claiming to be professionals or knowledgeable know-it-alls at all I, that's not this we just enjoy weird shit that has to do with you know sex and sometimes outside of sex where it's just kick like, exactly it's it's okay and as far as we're concerned everybody on earth has a kink or a fetish i don't care what you say maybe dudes like red cars maybe that's your fetish all your cars are red or maybe all your jordans gotta be white or you know maybe all of your perfume gotta smell like white lily i don't know right? like <laughs> maybe you only you do know? doggy maybe you only do missionary oh uh, that's marriage <laughs> that's what that's why they call it marriage missionary. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry sorry for anybody out there that's married it's just a funny joke there it's all right. Gotta, I got to throw a couple punches once in a while. Side note, point of clarification E thing. We'll stream it, and then I will edit it, and we'll post it other places. Yeah, we'll definitely post it other places. I still got to get all the social media handles up and running. I'm still scared of the minefield that they call Twitter. And side note, I guess that's really it. Show, right? I think so. Do you want to do a shameless plug on the handles we do have? Oh, uh, so shameless plug on the handles. We finally got that email, so please, please email us at our dark side adventures at gmail.com uh, for anything as far as like questions or even like show requests or you know if you're if you have like your own channel or you know you're just kind of knowledgeable in the subject that we plan on talking about like you're more than welcome to hop in here uh, we're always looking for good input definitely looking for you know other experiences and you know just kind of stuff that we can add to our own arsenals as well and that's that's one of them uh, as far as YouTube obviously nothing nothing is on there yet but it's coming soon Dark Side Adventures on YouTube you can find us there so uh, I don't think we have any more handles right now. Yeah, uh, Twitter, Instagram, or are we gonna put our uh, stuff on Apple iPod or Apple Podcasts? I thought about that too. Uh, are they gonna let us put stuff like this on Apple Podcasts? I don't know. We can try it. See if we get kicked I'm, off it. I'm in. I'm in for it too. That works. Okay. Uh, I'm out here. I'm rambling too much. I'm gonna go ahead. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let's land this plane. So uh, we've already given the handles. Obviously, like look for next week. The next show's title is actually gonna be over consent, and we definitely have have some good stuff in store. Yeah, I'm excited. We actually almost recorded that one tonight, so this week yeah. we got a little bit ahead of ourselves. Bad, my bad timing, but <laughs> on, on, a, on a good note, I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a wonderful, uh, I guess this is going to be posted on Sunday, so y'all have a wonderful week until Thursday, whenever the other one is posted. And I am Edwin. I am Coco. And we will see you guys come next show. We are signing off. Adios. Bye-bye.